uh, it's great to be back in some form of uh, a fashion, even if it's not quite in person yet. Uh, it's still great to see all the faces that I recognize, including some I don't know from Northwest Arkansas, I would imagine. But uh, again, it means football season's here and, and we're as excited as we can be. So uh, please stay with us as we may change some things up this year. Uh, obviously, as start to come out the other side of the pandemic, we'd love to do these in person again, and we look forward to doing that. Uh, so keep our knees bent, remain flexible, I guess would be the key there. But a couple of things, we know we are in a submarine as, as football coaches and players during training camp, but we do know there's a lot of things going on outside of our programs and outside of the game of football. And uh, certainly Hurricane Ida has affected a handful of members of our teams and their families. So we're keeping those people in our prayers. Uh, talked to Skip Holtz last night. Uh, Rustin kind of missed the brunt of it, which is great news, but they're just like us. They got a lot of kids that have family and, and friends that they can't get in touch with. So once again, we'll uh, do everything we can for those kids and, uh, and try to keep them as positive and as focused as we can while taking care of their families in any way possible. Uh, one last thing uh, outside of football, I guess, would be uh, how thankful we are for the soldiers and uh, how the ones that lost their lives in Afghanistan are in our prayers. You know, we're we don't take for granted the freedoms they afford us and the fact that playing this game is a privilege, not a right. And uh, we are afforded that opportunity by them. Moving on to football, it's been a great training camp. I can't remember a training camp where I had more fun and, and enjoyed being around the guys more. Uh, they worked their butts off. It's uh, It's been mentally taxing and physically taxing, just like I think training camp should be. And I think it's got us in a place where uh, we're very excited. You look at the number of spots on our roster where we've got more depth than we've ever had. And we had competition in some spots where we never could really get the competition to be what it needed to be to make people grow up. And uh, so it's been really positive from that regard. Uh, we got a team that is incredibly bought into what we're doing here. They believe in the process. They understand the whys behind a lot of the things that we do nowadays. And uh, that's just made everything better. It's made it where guys can teach the standard. And uh, they can also teach that the standard is the minimum, not a goal. And I think that makes everything better when you can really start to rise and, and grow. As we've always talked about, you know, it's really the same thing you do with your talent level. You're trying to raise the ceiling of your program while also raising the floor. And I think once we get to understanding that the standard is the lowest level acceptable, then we can really start to grow and uh, continue to raise that bar. So that's been good. Um, I know everybody's excited for football season. Our coaches and players are ready to take the field after what feels like a long off season. You know, it's amazing how much work you put in to get to game one. When you think about coming back after school starts in January to spring football to the transitionary period before summer workouts and then, of course, training camp. So a lot of time and energy has gone into this by a lot of people. And we're excited as we can be to be here. Uh, more excited to have the opportunity to play in an amazing environment in Arkansas on Saturday play a team from the SEC West, guys that with a lot of SEC experience on the roster, certainly have a lot of respect for Coach Sam Pittman, followed his career through the years back when he was a position coach, coaching the offensive line. And uh, now I guess we're in a, a unique fraternity of, of very few people where former offensive line coaches are head coaches now. And so again, I look forward to that and look forward to seeing him in person. Uh, but we're gonna worry about what we can control. We're going up there to a great environment while we will take it all in when that ball is turned over, uh, we plan to take advantage of every second of that game clock when we get the opportunity to play this game together up in that great environment. So uh, with that, I'll open up for any questions. Okay, we'll have first question, Mark Berman. Mark, you there? I'm here. Mike, how you doing? Doing great, Mark. Here you go. I'm trying to find you on my... Uh deal here. Bear with me one second. There you are. Okay. I, I need to ask you kind of a global question, Mike. I know you're solely focused on Arkansas right now, but what is it? What is the mindset like when you're playing perhaps one of the toughest non-conference schedules in the country, Arkansas, Houston, Texas, back to back to back? What, what, how does that venture into your thinking as you solely focus on Arkansas? Yeah, I, I think right now, Mark, our, our focus is want to know this week. Like, what can we do to put ourselves in position to get this game to the fourth quarter up there in Fayetteville this weekend. I can go back kind of, as you talk about from a 10,000 foot level and talk about when I first saw the schedule and it kind of got put on a piece of paper in front of me back in February or March. I, I just thought what a great opportunity for our team. What, what a great opportunity for our team 
and you talk about why these kids make the decision to come to Rice in the first place, it's because they want the best of both worlds. They want to play big time college football and get a world class degree. And I think when you talk about starting in the SEC West up at a story program like Arkansas coming back here and playing the team across town and then going to Austin and playing the horns. I mean, I don't know if it gets any more big time than that. And uh, certainly for those of us that love football history, you know, the throwback to the Southwestern Conference is uh, certainly there as well. Uh, next question, T. Murphy. Yeah, it's Tom. Hey, Mike. Um, uh, question about what you're expecting to see from this Kendall Bryles offense that has uh, nine starters back except for a quarterback and one receiver. What, what do you what do you see from them? Yeah, a lot of tempo. You know, I don't think Kendall's ever going to change his stripes. Uh, I've, I've followed his career as well and remember all the things that they were able to do at Baylor when they were kind of cutting edge and nobody had really seen that offense before. Uh, I do think it's an interesting combination, you know, with uh, <laughs> Pittman and how he used to grind the ball. And, and, you know, I'd study his film to watch how he blocks some things. Yeah. Uh, so, Kendall, first off, gosh, I went into a whole diatribe. I think it was really good. I wish y'all had caught it. But uh, what I was talking about was how interesting I think the marriage is between Coach Pittman and uh, his grinded out run game, offensive line background, and now bringing Kendall Bryles to the fold. And uh, I know how Coach Pittman's wired. And so I'm sure those guys are going to have the same mindset of coming off the rock. But everything you've studied about Kendall through the years, back to when they were at Baylor, it was tempo, tempo, tempo. And they were so ahead of the curve. And, uh, you know, again, like that's that's something that they do well. They get set. They get another play snapped. And, and a lot of people, a lot of defenses don't have time to reset the Oda loop and be ready to play and be ready to fight the next play. And that's the challenge for our defense. And we're trying like crazy to replicate that tempo in practice. Uh, but the biggest thing with Kendall is, you know, you – well, you got to stop the run, even though people think it's a throwing offense, you certainly better be ready to stop the big play and keep the ball in front of you and not let it go over your head. And with those talented receivers that Arkansas has got, that's going to present a great challenge to us. But we've worked really hard and we're excited about it. Next question, Scotty Bordelon. Hey, Coach. Hope you're doing well. Um, I wonder what it's been like for you and your staff preparing for KJ Jefferson this week. And, you know, what have y'all found to be maybe his best attributes? Yeah, I think you look at both those quarterbacks, uh, you know, and KJ obviously has already been, been named as the starter. But I think uh, the Malik kid, like he, uh, gosh, he could be a running back. He could play about any position on offense, not just quarterback. So both those guys bring so much to the table. I think KJ's experience uh, last year, I believe it was in the Mizzou game, you know, is going to pay dividends for him and give him an opportunity to be more comfortable. I know it's his first home game. He's getting a chance to start. I think that's going to be really fun for him, too. Uh, but we're going to try to make it not quite so enjoyable. But those guys, uh, I think they can ha do similar things within their scheme. But uh, obviously, Malik and his legs uh, is pretty explosive and is a different concern if he enters the game. Next up will be Andrew Hutchinson. Hey, Coach, I was going to ask you about your quarterback and, and the situation you have. It looks like you still have a name to starter. And, I mean, I was wondering, could you envision a scenario in which both Luke and Wiley play, or are you? is your philosophy more of, you know, I want to pick one guy and stick with him for the entire game? Yeah, you know, I think my comfort level is, I guess we should do whatever's best for the team. It shouldn't be about my comfort level. I was going to say my comfort level is to have a starter and to have him take every rep in practice. And uh, that's not where we are right now. You're, the, the people at Arkansas are going to see two quarterbacks this weekend because they both earned the right to do it. Uh, also, like they can do everything in our offense, but one of them is a little more dynamic when he's running with the football. So uh, very similar to what I just described about Arkansas's quarterbacks is how I feel about ours. I, I've certainly seen it be successful before. I've seen everything from Steve Spurrier back in 1998 where he had a different quarterback running the game every single play. I certainly don't plan to do that. But uh, I, I remember those things working, and I know they can work, and, and it can be very healthy. It takes maturity from both kids, both participants in the quarterback competition to continue to build each other up, encourage each other, and be positive when the other one goes in the game. And I think we've got two guys that love this team and, and really care about each other and will, are willing to do that. So, yeah, we'll see both of them on Saturday. Next question, uh, Sam Kahn. Hey, Mike, a little, little bit more on that. How has their performances gone throughout training camp and just how comfortable are you with, with both of them running the offense at this point? Really comfortable with both of them. 
really comfortable. Uh, the thing that, you know, I knew from the film and from studying Luke when he was in high school, I knew he had a good arm. I didn't know he had this kind of arm. I, I didn't know he had like a howitzer for a right arm, which is really cool, right? Like, and the ability to keep plays alive. The, the difference in them right now is Wiley. This is your four for Wiley Green in this system, you know, and, and Luke has been with us for a month and a half or two months. And Luke has just closed the gap knowledge wise so well. Uh, he's just doing so many good things. And, and they're both so exciting, uh, you know, but the, uh, the leadership of, of Wiley and the time with his teammates and the media factor, that's something we're still just trying to iron out. You know, you watched the second scrimmage, Sam, I believe, and you saw both of them have opportunities to maybe separate. And uh, if they had just hit a few more passes each, it, it probably would have been more clear one way or the other. As it is, you know, they, they both hit some passes where we're like, holy cow, that's amazing. And they both missed a few that I think they'd want back. And right now, I think the best chance for us to win this game and, and going forward is for both of them to utilize their talents for our football team. All right, Mark, you're not Mark Bremen up next. Mike, back to, back to your quarterback situation. Since you, since you said we're going to see you're going to see both quarterbacks, will you name a guy who will start before Saturday, or you'll, you'll that'll stay uh, under wraps? Uh yeah, I think I'll tell you like 102 if you text me. I'll try to do it walking out the tunnel. Like we're going to keep it under wraps as long as we can uh, because I do think those guys present some different skill sets. And, you know, we also got Giovanni Johnson who started our Marshall game. and He's healthy and he's doing some good things. Like there's there's so many things that, that we want to be flexible with. And, again, a lot of it truly will come down to how things go this week in practice. Like, hey, which plays is so-and-so doing better? Which ones is he most comfortable in and getting the ball out on time? And throwing that thing with confidence. Those are the plays that will be assigned to certain people. Uh, and assign, assign, I guess it's in terms of starting the game, like I just think that's overvalued at any position. You know, like who a starter is anymore. When you're in a West Coast offense, it's going to put people in the right positions to be successful. And, you know, aside from the offensive line, if you're a starter, it just means what package we were in uh, that down. And I guess the quarterback position normally. But uh, we're going to keep that one a secret. Next question from uh, Nate Allen. Uh, yeah, Coach, you mentioned Giovanni Johnson. I was curious, is he practicing in any other positions other than quarterback since he's kind of buried there? No, Giovanni is, has really just practiced at quarterback this camp. Obviously, he is a, a talented athlete and would have value at other places. Uh, but again, there's things that we see with him and things that we're like, oh, my gosh, that could really help us. And you go back to the things he's done with his feet throughout his career here. Uh, whether it's simple plays like stick draw or, or just pulling the ball on the backside of read option. And of course, like he made throws when he had to against Marshall, like he is, he has been a big time player for us in, in a game that was a, a big deal to our program. So nobody's throwing Giovanni out by any means. And uh, his ability to work at other positions is something maybe we talk about if the depth chart remains this way for an extended period of time. Thank you. All right. Next up is, is that Bob. Yeah, sorry, won't let me rename. Hey, Coach, uh, Bob Holt from the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. We, we talked the other day. I enjoyed speaking with you. Hey, I just had a, a quick follow-up on Giovanni. Uh, being from Conway, how excited do you think he is for this game? I know you've got a, a young guy from Rogers, Christian Francisco. Just wonder if he's making the trip or how's, how's he doing up uh, down there? Yeah, Christian Francisco has had a great camp. He really has. Like, he came out here and, and really led all summer long in the workouts, like, just he wasn't going to let anybody not know his name. And he did the same thing on the football field. He was hard to bring down and, and really ran the ball incredibly hard. And uh, yeah, both those guys will be on the trip. Christian Francisco and Giovanni Johnson will be on the trip. Thank you. All right. Uh, any other questions for uh, Coach Bloomgren before we go to the players? Hey, Chuck, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, yeah, Richard Dean, the Chronicle. Coach, before you go, I just want to ask you something uh, about since Jake will be coming up. Just tell me about, you know, Jake, you know, had a real good uh, season last year in the final two games. He really came on. Uh, what do you what do you see his role and, you know, how much, you know, how good can he really be? And I don't know. I don't want to put a ceiling on Jake Bailey. But what I will tell you is that that, that same ascension you saw last year, we saw. And then it's really progressed even more this offseason. His confidence as a football player, his confidence and knowledge in this offense has been really good. Uh, I'm excited to have him on the field. I think that uh, obviously, I think it's natural to compare him to some 
Austin Trammell type roles because Austin was our go-to guy and a guy we targeted a lot of plays for on third down. And, and absolutely, Jake's going to be in that conversation. Like there's a lot of things designed for Jake Bailey to get open and we trust him to catch the ball. Uh, I think another thing that we can't look past is his ability to help us on special teams. You know, you go back to the North Texas game last year and, you know, he got called back by a block in the back that was silly because he's behind the play, but that was uh, like a 80 or 90 yard punt return. And uh, that shows you Jake's, uh, explosive potential. So he has the ability to, to be really sudden in space and get open, create separation on third down, but he does have explosive potential as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Next question for Matthew Bartlett. Hey, Bloom, we've talked a lot about offense uh, on the defensive side. Uh, how do you feel about those guys in your continuity uh, going into this season? A uh, couple guys gone from last year, but still a pretty strong unit. Yeah, uh, really only one starter gone in blaze obviously and then the loss of the braylon is a big deal right we the braylon was a difference maker he created a new line of scrimmage but luckily when you have 10 starters that could come back and then you add back in a healthy naive smith and you add back in a healthy george nagua who had to miss all of last season you just feel like our depth is so much better everywhere uh, i'm really pleased with how our defensive line is playing even in the absence of, of the braylon because I, I just feel like we have two deep that can go out there and roll through. And, and obviously against a tempo team like Arkansas and the way Kendall does things, you're going to need some people to jump in there. You're going to need the ability to roll people in there that you can trust to get in there and do their job. And once again, reset that over, be ready to fight the moment the ball turns over. And uh, I think we've got a group of guys that want to do that. Tim, did you have a follow-up question? Oh, I do. And it's Tom. Yeah. Hey, Mike, Sam Pittman said the other day, you guys are going to play bully ball. You're going to control the clock and, and move the chains and, and, and overpower them in the trenches or try to. Uh, I wonder how that is going to match up to Barry Odom and, and that defense. Well, first off, uh, Barry Odom has a lot of different calls in that defense. It seems like uh, a lot like playing our own defense all through camp. They kind of swing in from vines everywhere. And uh, I appreciate Sam Pittman saying that we play bully ball. It's something that we try to do. You know, like we live and breathe intellectual brutality around here. And you talk about controlling the clock. I think we were second in time of possession last year in the nation at 36 minutes a game. And, and that's something we take uh, very seriously as well. We want to be able to get those first downs and, and then get those first downs, possess the ball and end up in the end zone. And that's obviously the goal. But something we do talk around here uh, a lot about is control the clock. Uh, pound the rock and play great defense and it's a philosophical belief that we have uh, last year our, our defense had to take on 15 less plays a game than the average in the conference and that's uh, that's a big deal but it's also a big deal when we can be efficient and end in the end zone and that's something we've got to continue to do a better job of this year is by creating the plays that flip the field and then finishing in the red zone yeah thanks mike thank you okay we'll close out coach with uh steve helwick go ahead steve Hey coach, Jordan Myers has been a versatile player for this offense for a long time, but it looked like in camp there was an emphasis on getting him more touches as a running back this year. Uh, what were some of the things you saw out of Jordan that makes his role shift more toward running back and less toward tight end for this upcoming season, it seems? Yeah, Steve, I, I don't think that's it at all. I don't think it's more towards running back. I just think the value he has being on the field for our offense is extraordinary. You know, he's a guy that's uh, through his career, he's played wildcat quarterback. He's played fullback. He's played inline tight end. He's played motion tight end. He's played extended receiver, and he runs the ball extremely well. I mean, we knew in high school, I think his, in his high school career, he rushed for 2,300 yards playing for Dickinson right down the road. So when you're at that 6A level of football and you have that kind of success, obviously we know you're capable of doing it. And that's the coolest thing for us right now. You know, I think some of the things Coach Tui brought to our, our offense is the ability to do a lot of things out of the same personnel group. And we can literally line up in something that looks like two back, two tight, and Jordan could be a tight end, or he could be a fullback, or he could be a running back. And then, oh, yeah, we can not line up in three by one out of the same personnel grouping. And then he brought shifts and motions back to us. You know, Coach Tui uh, had spent a lot of time with Coach Sarkeesian when they coached together at Washington, and they got together this offseason, and that was great. And then, you know, also back to our roots with the West Coast stuff with John Gruden and some of the shifts and motions that we did at Stanford. So we kind of pulled those things out. And the ability to be in one personnel with Jordan and then move him or shift him uh, has just been really good. And, and we hope it's going to be tr problematic for defensive coordinators. We hope it's going to keep them up a little at night. All right, Coach, thanks. Well, uh, Thank you all.